Hi, Buddy Lindsay here from gojango.com. Today I wanted to talk to you about testing. In a previous video, I talked a little bit about uh, different types of tests, test-driven development, unit tests, or no tests at all. Today I want to talk about different types of testing, like unit testing, integration testing, and regression testing, and in the context of how you do that with Django. To start that off, let's talk about unit tests. Unit tests are, in like a previous video, are units of tests that you write for specific pieces of code. An example is if you have a method on a model called calculate price or calculate total price, you would test out that calculate total price and make sure that what you put into it is exactly what you get out of it. So what you would do is you have an if statement and you would test both branches of that if statement. If you had an or in there, and you're comparing something, you would test those two branches of that or and include maybe a null or a zero in there since you're dealing with price to make sure you get the correct result. So if you have, say, a if statement in there with an if and an else, you might have up to three or four or maybe even five tests that you would write because you're trying to account for the most logical common scenarios in that chunk unit of code. You would also potentially do mocking in unit tests instead of trying to set up a bunch of different models to be able to test all the different scenarios that you would get inside of the get total price method because what you're testing is the get total price method, not the quantity, the get quantity method and the get total price. So you would mock out the get uh, quantity method and return back a result you're expecting from that. So it's kind of where mocking comes into play inside of doing unit tests and it keeps those chunks of code to be more what you would expect to have. So where would you do unit testing? Well, you would do them in models like we gave an example. You do them in views, you would do them in forms, and you would potentially do them in like celery tasks that you might write or, you know, delay task type deal. Um, or custom classes that you might write or libraries that you know, anywhere that you have code that you want to make sure specific units of code actually do what you expect them to do. So another type of testing that we would talk about is integration testing. Integration testing is using our example a second ago where you have get quantity and get total price is where you would set up all your different models and when you call the get total price it actually calls the get quantity and gets real data and passes down through there so that you're saying hey when I call the get total price, it calls the get quantity, I get a real result back and I get a real, uh, real result and what I'm expecting in our get price. So the question is from there, why would you do unit testing over doing integration testing? Well, from my experience, uh, integration testing is something I don't really do a lot of because it can get really unwieldy really fast you could potentially have a view, a function-based or class-based, that only has like five, six lines of code, but depending on the complexity of what you're trying to do in those five or six lines of code, you could have 50 lines of setup code of models and everything going on to do one integration pass uh, through that entire, you know, five lines of your view code. So integration testing to me is more of a, and this is my opinion, is, is more of a, uh, if you have business value that you're trying to accomplish and you have, you know, business things that you're trying to accomplish and you want to make sure those happen all the time and those particular things never work. As an example, another way to do integration tests, two ways actually, is to use the uh, self.client on a Django test case inside of your uh, unit test, inside of your tests. Um, it actually does a creates a uh, request and then calls the view and then gets a response object back. Uh, this is useful because it says, hey, I'm rendering out everything that happens in this view. And you go through there and you validate, hey, that you called the correct URL, that the status code that you're expecting is correct, and then the context data that you're expecting to get back is actually getting back. You can go a little bit of a step further and make sure some of the basic um, HTML is rendered out exactly as you expect it with that context data because if it calls a template at the end of it, then it does return that entirety of that HTML that your Django templates or Jinja templates renders out. And you could do some comparisons on that. Another 
part of integration testing would be with the, uh, I think it's the live server test case. And this is where you would hook in something like Selenium and you would do a more you know integrated test because what it does is it starts an actual Django server in the background, similar to when you're doing a run server. And Selenium has a web driver that actually calls that URL renders it out in its little web driver. And then depending on how you instruct, it'll actually click on things. And then it goes through the rest of the process of using your app and as a full like integration test to make sure from beginning to end, it actually all works. Now, you know, those two things sound great. Integration tests sound great. Where they start to fall down is if you try to do them for everything. In my, in my experience and from what I've seen, if you try to do them for everything, you're gonna spend a lot of time, especially on a large team. If you're on like you and somebody else, it's probably not gonna matter as much. But if you're on you know, a six person team, a 20 person team, then having huge integration tests, testing every individual little thing is going to spend a lot of maintenance time in, whenever somebody's just changing styling because depending on how aggressive your integration tests are, uh, you can really muck things up and really cause a lot of headaches. However, I am a proponent of having integration tests when you're testing compl complex things. So I, you, I suggest you have unit tests for each individual units to make sure all the components that you're building in isolation work the exact way you're expecting them to, and then you have an integration test that tests the entire stream of those you know, from beginning to end. So that, that way you don't have to have a bunch of integration tests that test each individual branch of every single thing in all of these unit tests that you've just written. So you have less complex tests at the end of the day. So you have fewer unit integration tests and more unit tests. And you kind of got to find the balance that you feel comfortable with. Because it, I mean, you could write integration tests for the entirety of your stack for every scenario in every branch of all of these codes of all of this code and you would know exactly what's going on, but that too gets complex and you have to find that balance in the real world. So the, the last test that I mentioned earlier was regression tests. And regression tests are great because they're easy to understand. They are unit tests and integration tests mixed into one when you're fixing a bug that you found. That's effectively what a regression test is. So if you understand doing unit tests and you understand using uh, integration tests, you understand writing regression tests. So to write regression tests, um, you would use the test client. You would use the request factory like you would in unit tests. You would use the live uh, server test case. You would use Selenium. You would use all of these tools uh, inside of Django that's already built in to do your other tests to write regression tests. And generally, depending on where you are, you would label, hey, this test is fixing this ticket, which is, you know, connected to this bug. and you know, now we have this case tested for, hopefully it'll never break again. So I want to present a specific type of unit test that uh, a coworker um, developed and I've actually kind of come to embrace. It's called the test adders, test attributes. Since we're getting into class-based views a lot and they're becoming more and more common, generic class-based views, class-based views, you know, custom or otherwise, or default implementations, uh, it, it seems more like creating a class and inheriting from another class and then setting properties on that class is more or less a common scenario when you are setting up your views and you're setting up other things. So one of the things that a coworker uh, developed and I like is we're actually testing that, hey, we know that our, uh, our, our classes are inheriting from these particular classes, base classes and mixins. We know that all the properties are set to this specific thing. So let's take a Django REST framework uh, view. You're inheriting from a view set. You're inheriting from a specific mixin. So you check is instance of those things. You have a serializer class. You have a um, filter class. You have you know you have your ordering fields. You have you know all these different things that you would set on your uh, view set. And you want to make sure that in your test you're covering all of those cases. So why is that important? Why, if we're declaring classes, would, would we want to set those? Well, 
because at some point this becomes your base API, it becomes your base code in this case uh, for a lot of extra things. And if someone's going through there and they don't really know what they're doing, they're brand new to the code base and they know they need to change a couple of things, you're expecting this code that you've declared to do this based on properties that you've set, you're expecting that to always do that. And if somebody just goes through there and they're like, oh, well, there's this filter, this Django filter that we're using and it inherits from this thing. So we'll just use this, this bait, this other one, this subclass of it, and it should work just, fi just fine. Well, it's gonna cause the test to fail. And we can then question right then and there, do we really want to inherit from this filter or do we want to inherit from the old filter? We can make a decision, we can have a discussion, we make sure the right thing happens instead of the code getting pushed to production and two weeks later, you know, we find out that, hey, there's been a bug that everyone's been complaining about and we just now find out about it and all it was was a filter was changed in our uh, class-based view that is, is not technically like code that we're declaring and methods and everything, but is something that we're setting as a property. So I present that to you, take it with, uh, with what you do as a possible thing to test with. I personally like it, our team uses it, and we have found it useful, and I just wanted to present it to the rest of the world along with ways of testing. I thank you for watching. I hope you've uh, potentially gotten value. Uh, the goal of this video is to present uh, different ways of doing testing and how you can relate those to doing them in Django specifically. Uh, so if you liked it, please leave a comment and let me know what you think. Let me know how you do tests. Let me know your opinions of testing and of the different types of testing and, and how you do those in Django. I'd love to hear that. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel and get updates uh, weekly. And feel free to thumbs up if you like the video. I thank you for your time and have a great day.